Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is a crazy day. Strymon has done it again. They released this bad boy. That's right, the follow-up to the flagship pedal, the Big Sky MX. For those who don't know, it's been 11 years since Strymon released their OG flagship reverb pedal, the Big Sky. It has and continues to be one of the most coveted reverb pedals on the market today. But before we get into the specifics, let's first get a glimpse into how it sounds. If you're watching this video, it's safe to assume you're no stranger to Strymon and their reputation for amazing pedals that sound spectacular and provide tons of inspiration. But in the off chance you aren't familiar, Strymon is a relatively new pedal company originally known as Damage Control that started back in 2004. In 2009, they started operating under the Strymon name, followed by the release of their widely known Strifecta, the Timeline in 2011, and the Big Sky and the Mobius in 2013. Fast forward 11 years and here we are with the new Big Sky MX. In today's video, we're going to dive into what's new, how does it sound, and of course, is it worth it? There are a lot of pros, but there are a few cons, which we'll get to in just a minute. Here's a quick chart showing the differences between the new and the outgoing unit. Now let's go ahead and dive into some sounds.
Now for this review, I'm not gonna cover every single last feature in the Big Side MX. I'm just gonna go over the stuff that I think is noteworthy and all the basic new stuff that's in there. I'm gonna be sprinkling sound examples throughout the interview so you guys can hear it while also talking about all the important key features. So let's get into it. Now let's talk about the navigation and layout. Strymon did a great job of giving us all the parameters and functions we need on the pedal while also making them easy to access on the inside. So of course we have all of our main parameters, the decay, pre-delay, tone, mod, and mix, but they have these parameter one and two knobs here that you can custom assign. So they come stock with a certain parameter assigned to it, but you can easily go into the menu and assign to these uh, knobs anything you want. So the functions that are important to you you can assign there. It's really easy to get into the menu. All you have to do is push and then you're in there. And then from there you rotate, even for saving, just by holding this down, you can save a preset. And then of course you bank through with your two buttons. So the navigation on board is really, really easy. And in addition to that, they have the hybrid situation going on. So the Strymon has software that you can use to edit your presets and sound on the computer as well as your MIDI stuff. So I personally love that, makes it really easy, really intuitive. You just hook this up with the USB right here to your computer and you're able to edit on the computer and then basically load everything to the box and then plug and play, you're good to go. I think that's the way of the future is that hybrid kind of editing software situation. Fractal does a good job with that. We saw Neural DSP come out with an editor, computer editor for their Quad Cortex. And Source Audio has always had their editor for their one series pedals. And you know, we have Wawa's Audio that has the new IO website. So it's nice to see Strymon continuing to adapt that approach as well because you have the great analog editing approach, but then for those of us who want to edit on the computer, we have that as well. So kudos to Strymon for having both options. I think that is the way of the future. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below which way you like to edit your pedals. Now let's get into the sound. Of course, this one's a no brainer. This thing sounds excellent, but Strymon has always sounded excellent with all of their pedals. So this isn't something new. One thing that I do like about this new unit is that they included the older algorithms from the big sky. So when you go through, it's not in every algorithm, but like if you go through Hall and I think in Cloud and some of the others, you'll have the old Big Sky algorithm there and you can hear the difference, which is nice. So if you wanna have your old presets, like let's say you're upgrading from the old Strymon, you can still make use of that sound, right? Because the Big Sky has a sound that everyone's come to know and love it for or hate it, depending on what your preference is. So if you still wanna have access to that, they still have some of those algorithms in here. So that was really cool of them to do that while also giving you the new ones as well. So I like how they did that. And something else I like about Strymon reverbs just in general is I like how they blend in with the source audio. Some reverbs get like muddied or pushed in front or pushed way too far in back and they sound separate. Strymon does a good job of, I don't know how they do that, but no matter what you put into it, whether it's a piano or a guitar or anything, it has a way of saturating the sound without overwhelming it and taking it away. So I don't know what it is about the reverb algorithms, but they do a really good job of just being able to blend. I'm really picky about that. Certain reverbs just don't blend well, but the Big Sky MX continues to deliver on that front and it does a great job of blending with the source audio. Uh, another cool thing about this reverb pedal is it can sound as big or as small. It can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. So of course, everyone knows this thing to be like a reverb machine. And I think the praise and worship community has definitely, uh, <laughs> for better or for worse, <laughs> um, used the algorithms on this machine and, and popularized it for certain things. But I think people forget guys like Toast and have this on their pedal board, whether it's metal, jazz, uh, electronic, these are really popular in the synth world. These really are one of my favorite keyboard players, J3PO uses this for his Nord Stage 3. So this really is a can do all reverb box. So it doesn't matter your genre, uh, what style there is a reverb algorithm in here for you now let's talk about the build quality of course this is the easy 10 out of 10 this thing i think is just all straight aluminum chassis the knobs the switches and the hardware it's just all solid i mean and this is nothing new if you've ever purchased a Strymon pedal or used one, you know that they have excellent build quality. Seeing how its predecessor has been out for 11 years, these things are built like tanks. They're not going anywhere. So build quality is top notch. I really feel like I could throw this thing through them and it would just be fine. Not gonna do that, but that's just the confidence that I have rocking this thing in the hand. It, it just feels great to the touch. 
So let's go ahead and get into some of the new features. I'm gonna go over just some of the ones that I thought were pretty cool. The biggest one that I thought was really cool was the dual reverb engine. So now you can run two reverb algorithms at one time. That is a huge massive leap forward and let me explain to you why I think so. So number one thing is I have a special pedal on my board, the Source Audio Collider, and that's a delay reverb dual engine all in one pedal. And what's nice about it is I can run it as dual delay or dual reverb or just one of each. And that is a very, very powerful feature. And to have that on here is huge because if you remember, Magneto is a tape delay right so to speak and now that there are two separate engines this means that this now becomes a reverb and delay engine box in one that is huge so you can now run a delay into the reverb so if you don't have a delay pedal on your board this can function as delay and a reverb that's huge in addition to that you can now run reverbs into each other so now you can have dull reverb so let's say you want to do like a shimmer into a cloud Right, so you get these massive ambient results that you never had possible before. So really cool. And not only that, but the routing is really great. So with that dual reverb engine, you can do series, parallel, or left, right. So that means I can have a cloud on the left and a bloom on the right, or I can switch that and have bloom on the left and cloud on the right, or I can run them into each other via series. So there's a lot of flexibility with the routing, the parallel, the series, and the left, right output is absolutely amazing and ingenious and i think that adds a lot more extra value to a big box reverb like this especially considering its premium price So next is they have new algorithms. They have redesigned the algorithms in this box. Like I said, they also have some of the old ones in there as well. You can actually hear the difference. Now, the big question is, do these sound better or worse than the previous algorithms? I don't think it's a matter of better. I think it's a matter of building upon your legacy. So what I mean by that is the original Big Sky, it did a great job with regular reverbs, but it's the ambient reverbs that really put it on the map as far as what it could do with soundscapes and textures. So one thing I noticed about the older algorithm is that they were kind of over the top. Again, not a bad thing, but that's what the Big Sky was known for. And these new algorithms, they still have that essence of being over the top and having amazing soundscape capabilities, but the way that they did it nowadays, it just feels a little more, I don't have the word for it, but it just feels a little more, um, a little more subtle and mature without getting rid of the signature Big Sky sound, if that makes sense. I think they did a good job of building upon a legacy. I think they did a good job of giving you both options because sometimes that's necessary and other times it's not. So I like the option of having both different types of sound in there. They both sound great, but I think just different use case and different functions. So 
I don't want you to look at it as being better. I want you to look at it as building upon an already amazing legacy of sound and then being able to have an option as far as where you want to take it. So it's kind of cool to see companies who don't get caught up in trying to be better than they were last time, but instead just trying to continue to push boundaries and how they can improve upon what they've already done. So I think Strymon did a good job of navigating that tight line because they could have easily just went crazy and made some crazy type ambient algorithms, but instead, they kind of reinvented what they already had here, and I think it worked out really well for them. As far as the foot switches, we had the three before, but something to note, I don't think there's an option to make this a third preset button. I checked in the menu and the manual, and I didn't see an option where in the old one you can make this a third preset. So I think you're stuck with just these two being presets, but they did offer a dedicated infinite switch this time. This is an infinite and free switch, which you can toggle in the main menu. So that's really cool. So kudos to them for that. But it would have been nice to have the option to put this as a third preset pedal. So I could be wrong. So if I am wrong, please comment below. Let me know, appreciate it. So now I told you earlier before that the engines got updated. Let's go through the ones that specifically got updated. So the Cloud engine was upgraded. They said it was upgraded due to processing power. The previous Big Sky had one shark chip this has a tricore so it's just able to process the reverb that much better so it's a better sounding reverb you can take a listen to yourself and decide how you feel about that the bloom engine got an update as well you can now add harmonic pads to the bloom engine the coral engine also got updated with the ability to add tenor and baritone voicings and the non-linear mode got a bunch of new chop features so you can mess with gates and tremolos and get different cool effects that way as well now the magneto which is actually one of my favorites on this unit it's got the ping pong mode that's been added as well as the tape machines mode i really love that land and i had some cool fun experimenting with the tape heads and you can add i think up to six which gives you a lot of rhythmic possibilities and again with the new dual reverb engine mode you can feed that into a reverb and now you've got a delay into a reverb but in one pedal i'm really digging that feature the Shimmer Diggit update, I guess they fine tuned the pitch shifting, so that's supposed to be better. Um, I didn't really play with the Shimmer because Shimmer's not my favorite, but if you're into Shimmer, they did do some fine tuning on that reverb engine as well. And last but not least, for the engines is the swell mode. So before I think it was a separate engine, but now it's actually paired inside the hall mode and you can actually use swell like, um, in series mode with any other reverb. So it's now available to be used in series with all the reverb for added functionality, which would be worth checking out, especially for all you ambient tone gearheads. Now this one's a little bit under the radar, but this is a really big deal. You have the option of internally panning your reverb signal. This is really cool for recording purposes because how often do you record a signal, you pan it hard pan it left or right and then all of a sudden the reverb is cut off so what's really cool about that is you can actually alter your reverb signal and choose where you want to send it across the stereo field which comes in handy when it comes to recording so something's worth mentioning and something worth diving into if you get this pedal look into it the ability to pan your reverb signal that gives you some really cool options especially when it comes to recording and just making space for everything and making sure the stereo field always feels present even if you're hard panning now, another new thing is the impulse response algorithm. So you now have the ability to load in impulse responses for your reverbs. It comes stock loaded with songs like Springs and Halls and Reverb and Nonlinear options. But once again, you can load in your own impulse responses to add to your palettes of available reverbs. Pretty nifty. I also want to highlight that this thing has MIDI. It has MIDI via the TRS. It also has MIDI via the actual MIDI DIN. And then you have up to 300 presets that are recallable and they're really easy to stick on the box or you can save it inside the computer hardware. So if you're a fan of MIDI, this will more than suit your needs as far as MIDI capabilities. Now, as much as this is a great piece of gear, there are some cons, albeit not very many, but let's go ahead and go over some of those. So the first one is just the size. This is a bigger pedal. This probably takes up the space of my Pantheon dual overdrive and my SD-1 by Boss. So it's kind of like two to three pedals all in one. So if you're looking for a small board, this may or may not be the best option for you just because it is pretty big, okay? I think if you're in the market for a reverb like this, it's probably not the biggest deal breaker, but for those of you who like to travel light and want to save as much space as possible, there are other reverbs that do a great job that are smaller than this, that's for sure. Now this next one is both a pro and a con, and that is the sound of the reverb algorithms itself. Okay, for those of you who don't like Big Sky algorithms, then obviously this is a con because it's just more of Strymon's juiciness in this box times two. So if you weren't a fan of the last one, I don't see how you're gonna be a fan of this one because again, they didn't change their sound, they just simply updated it. So 
if you weren't a big fan of Charmin before or the Big Sky before, I don't see that changing with this one. So that might be a con for you, but you'll have to decide by the sound examples or maybe just demoing one yourself. Now let's go to the biggest con and probably the biggest elephant in the room and that is the price. This thing is coming in at $679. The previous unit I think is at $479, so that's a $200 increase. Now, that's just a lot of money. Uh, that's a lot of bread for a reverb machine. So that's gonna be a con for a lot of us players. It's simply just the barrier cost of entry. If you're looking for an affordable reverb option, this is not it. Does it sound great? Yes, it does. But again, if you're budget conscious and you have a certain limit, this is not gonna be for you. You might wanna check out Strymon's Cloudburst or maybe get a used Big Sky, but this is 679, so that's gonna be a big con. Uh, it's an amazing unit, it's a flagship unit, but yes, there is a barrier to entry on the cost, so just be mindful of that. Now, this is another con, although I have to verify, but the inability to switch this with their preset button. If they took that functionality out, that would kind of stink because that would be nice to be able to have the option set all through its preset. I don't see why they would take it out. I'm thinking that's a user error on my part, but if so, that would be listed as a con for me personally. Now let's talk about some of the pros. Now the first one up is the UI. I think this user interface is great. From editing onboard the pedal or even editing on the software, this is easy. I mean, even using the dual reverb function, I had no problem whatsoever dialing in dual reverb engines and going back and forth and editing the parameters I want to. Very, very simple to use, very simple to navigate. I couldn't have asked for an easier interface, which makes sense because it's a big pedal, so there's plenty of real estate to put knobs and stuff, but the screen really, really helps. I really wish that my source audio had a screen and this the ability to see some parameters, if even just a preset and some basic information. So kudos for that. I also think the MIDI is a job well done. Having 300 presets available and being able to access that with the TRS or the actual MIDI DIN in and being able to control all your presets from the software editor. I just can't praise striving enough for that. Any company that develops a software editor just makes life easier because nowadays editing on computers is so much easier, so much faster, especially with the way technology is going. Being able to have that hybrid approach is essential. So good job on that. It's definitely a, a pro. Now, of course, the obvious one is the sound. Again, this could be a pro or a con. I'm a fan of the Big Sky. I'm a fan of Strymon pedals and their sound in general. They do have their own characteristics, but I think that's a good thing. I think as a pedal company, you want to strive to have a signature. That's what sets you apart from all other manufacturers is to be able to know that you have a sound. I think the algorithms sound really good. I actually think they did a good job on the Bloom algorithm because that was kind of unwieldy in the previous model. So I think they took all the best things out of the Big Sky and just made them better. I think it's just a really good all around reverb. It fits really well with any source that you feed it. So good job on the sound. Of course, that's a pro because why else do we buy these things? It's so it can sound good. So if it doesn't sound good, obviously that's not a good thing. But clearly this thing sounds well as you can hear by the audio examples. Which leads me to the last one, which is price. Now this is actually a pro and a con. And you're probably wondering how in the world is this a pro? Let me explain it to you. If this were any other box, I would say that the price is absolutely crazy. But hear me out for a second. This thing comes in at 679. It's a lot of money, it's no doubt about it, period. It is not cheap, done, we get that. The perspective that I wanna to present to you, when I look at expensive flagship products like this, I look at companies as a whole. When you look at something like Fractal, right? And their modelers are really expensive, but you look at them as a whole. What's their track record for customer support? What's their track record for updating their products and software? What's their track record with coming out with new products that maybe undercut their older legacy products? And this is where I think Strymon shines. This reverb pedal is 11 years old, y'all, okay? So if this reverb pedal is 479 and you've had it for the last 11 years, you've paid less than $100 a year for an amazing reverb pedal. So let's break that down. This pedal will probably last for at least another decade, okay? That means some of your kids will have graduated college, some of you have gotten married, some of you have had kids. Like by the time Strymon comes out with another pedal, your life will be drastically different. A car paid off, you moved to a different city, retired, who knows, right? A decade is a good chunk of change of time. So. If you're gonna spend $700 on pedal, I wanna have the comfort of knowing that it will one, not only be supported, but two, something new is not gonna replace it very soon. So you can spend your 700 hard earned dollars on this pedal and it will last you a decade, at least. That is really, really good. So as a customer purchasing from a company, I know that I can spend 700 bucks on this and I'm again, paying less than $100 a year. Assuming that this pedal lasts another decade like the previous one did, Right, and that's something I think Strymon does really well is they're not always trying to come out with the latest, greatest thing. They're not chasing trends. They're simply like, hey, we wanna design the best product possible, 
And then that way we don't have to come up with something new every five seconds, which is kind of rare in this day and age because you know, you look at the iPhones and Androids, and it's always about the race to the newest thing. Where Strymon as a company seems kind of be the opposite. We're like, hey, let's put out something amazing once <laughs> and let it stick. So, I mean, to this day, the older Big Sky still sounds amazing. So, and it's 11 years old. So that just speaks to their company philosophy and their mindset. So when it comes down to being a pro, I call it a pro because they have the longevity and the customer support in their history and the track record. So take that for what you will. Now, that leads me to the final verdict of, is it worth it? Now, the question is yes and no, depending on what camp you're in. Let's start with the camp where I don't think it's worth getting this pedal. The first camp is if you're looking for a budget option. If you're looking for your first reverb, I don't think this is the best option because it's $700 and chances are you're probably missing other pedals on your pedal board. So with that 700, you could probably get a less expensive reverb pedal and also be able to afford a drive or a compressor or a delay or something of that nature. So I think for this price, I would not recommend it to beginners or those looking for their first reverb pedal. There are a bunch of great options to get your feet wet that still sound great. And personally, the Source Audio Collider to me is hands down the best value reverb delay sub $400 period. So I would actually recommend something like that where you get a reverb and a delay in one. It's got all the algorithms from their Ventress and their Nemesis delay pedal, which sound really good. And I'll do a comparison against these two, but they stack up really, really well against this pedal for half the cost. So if this is your first reverb pedal, I think you should skip on this one, unless you just have the money, but I'd skip on it and find something else, do some experimentation first. I also think you should hold off on this pedal if you have the previous version. The Big Sky one is still really good. And if you're someone who's just using the same cloud preset or the same hall reverb and you're really not experimenting, I don't think it's worth it to spend 700 just to kind of do nothing with it, right? There's a lot of options and new features in here, but if you're not gonna utilize them and you're happy with the sound that you have, I wouldn't hop on the bandwagon just because it's new. The Big Sky will be around for more years to come. It's a great unit already. It's tried, true, and battle tested. So I would not upgrade if you already have the Big Sky and you're just using it for basic presets and you're happy with your current sound. I also wouldn't suggest upgrading if you just simply don't have the budget for it. <laughs> I always say it's never worth getting to debt for a year. So if you don't have the budget for it and it's out of your budget, don't worry about it. It's not going anywhere. It'll be here for another decade. So if you can't afford it today, save up and afford it for tomorrow. Now let's talk about who I think this would be for. For the professional musician, whether that's gigging or studio work, your gear is your investment. This is your craft, this is your profession. And again, we look at the company as a whole, we're talking 10 years use out of this pedal minimum, all right? That's a no brainer, that's less than $100 a year. You have amazing algorithms, amazing technology. You also have the dual reverb engine, let's not forget about that. This is now two reverbs in one, that is huge being able to run different reverbs simultaneously out of each ear being able to have the series or the parallel processing is really really big so this is not just a simple upgrade to the previous model okay so you actually now have a dual engine don't sleep on that very powerful but yeah it's definitely worth it for the upgrade you're going to use this for the 10 years it's going to give you more options more features more capability and again for the pricing we broke it down to me, it's not that big of a deal when you, when you look over it over the long haul and you, you just know Strymon stuff is built to last. I also recommend this to those who were previous owners of the Big Sky but are looking for more sound design options. This has it. With the added addition of the impulse responses, with the updated Magneto engine with the tape head delays whatnot, and the ability to run those series, you now have a delay and a reverb unit in one box. Again, you cannot sleep on that feature. The dual engine really does take this to another level. This is coming from a guy who uses a dual engine reverb delay pedal right now. It takes up less space and it gives you a lot of sonic flexibility. So again, between the routing and the dual engine, your ability for sound design goes next level with this one for sure. So definitely worth it. And of course, if you just have extra money laying around, if you just got it like that, I ain't mad at you. I support you. Go get this. Why not? You can afford the latest, greatest. You won't hurt you. So grab this <laughs> grab this pedal also if you've never owned a big sky i think this is a great time to jump in i'd actually recommend this one over the predecessor again just for the extra features to me make it worth it um, it puts a pretty substantial gap it's one thing to update an algorithm which they do sound great but when you talk about dual engines that to me is like a deal breaker in the sense of hey that's a big separation being able to run simultaneous delays i'm really excited to see what the community does with presets because 
being able to run like a coral into a bloom or bloom into a cloud or shimmer into a cloud like there's gonna be some crazy combinations coming out of this box that i've only seen so far with the source audio collider so i'm really excited to see what the striming community does with the sound capabilities of these new units so anyways that's all i got for you guys today i do have another video where it's no talking it's simply just audio demos only you can find that here so go ahead and click that and watch that again like and subscribe it supports the channel definitely appreciate that and if there's anything that i missed please comment below i'd love to know your thoughts will you be getting this pedal do you think it's worth it or is it too expensive did you like the sound of it comment below love to know your thoughts and let me know if there's anything else you want me to review or demo on this pedal i catch you guys in the next video stay saucy